You at home will see tonight is exactly what those of us here in the theater will see. The illusions will not come from the camera, but from the talent of a 23-year-old man who already has become a superstar in the world of magic. He has devoted much of the past year to the preparation of this, his third television special. So please, find a comfortable spot on the edge of your seat as you watch dramatic illusions unlike any you have ever seen on television. As you watch the talent and the style that have propelled this young man to the top. As you watch the magic of David Copperfield. <laughs> $50,000 Italian Ferrari. Options excellent. It's a great car, but it's got one problem. It was only meant to go into two directions. Forward and reverse. Tonight, we're going to try to make it go in a direction it's never gone before.
and every time he's in a tense moment, like with his girlfriend, he tries to avoid the situation by making jokes. Well, it dawned on me that I do the same thing. But instead of using jokes, I use what's most comfortable for me. I do magic. And right now, with the help of my lovely guest, the star of the hit series Dallas, Mary Crosby, I'd like to show you a real situation from my life where I didn't take someone seriously enough and almost lost something very dear to me. Thank you. 
magicians have amazed audiences with daring and death-defying escapes. David is about to elevate the art to a new level, combining his devotion to movies with one of the most dangerous weapons ever created, the laser. I would again like to remind you there are no camera tricks used on this show. You are seeing exactly what our studio audience sees, and I assure you there is no danger to anyone here in our audience. The danger will be strictly to David. Here along with his guests, Cindy Williams and Louis Nye, more of the magic of David Copperfield. Before we can continue, I'm going to need to borrow something from the audience. Uh, can I borrow that ring you're wearing? Do you sure. mind? Okay. Because the piece we're going to present to you is called Ring Thing. have a cigarette? I'm all out and the only ones they sell here in the casino are those foreign kind. And I don't know about you, but I find foreign cigarettes much too strong for my taste. I'm sorry, I do seem to be rambling on. I, I haven't even asked you your name. James Bondage. I admire your hands, Mr. Bondage. I admire your taste, Miss... Plenty. Gooden plenty. Is this your first time in Ring Fingers Casino? This is my first time in any casino. And I don't know about you, but I find gambling hard work. It makes me so thirsty. Well, I'd love to buy you a drink, Miss. Plenty. But unfortunately, I have a business meeting this evening. Perhaps later. Tonight? Exactly. Before you go, would you, could you do something for me again with your hands? My car. Until later. You're three and a half minutes late. Sorry, but the traffic was incredible. No time for that. Here's a new item that just came out of the lab. I think you'll find it most useful. Don't put that on. Why? That ring possesses an extraordinary power. Here, read the instructions. Miss Henny Penny, will you step in here, please? This is the part you'll find useful. I quite agree. Do you recognize these bondage? Of course. The only device our lab has come up with that is completely inescapable. The eternal restraining cubes. Are you gonna give me a crack at it? Indirectly. You're going to do it with Miss Henny Penny. It's about time.
The ability to move from one place to the other. I can see where this could come in quite handy. Thank you, Miss Anybody. Have you ever heard of a man named Ringfinger? Why, well, yes. As a matter of fact, I was just in his casino. Well, we have information that his casino is a front for something. So you'll have to go back there and see if you can find anything interesting. I already have. James, the instructions. And be careful with that ring. You can count on me. Well, that's all right, but I'm afraid the bar is closed. You won't be able to buy me that drink you promised. I never go back on a promise. But James, what about you? Ordinary. Yes. 53 was a good year. Light, delicate, with just a hint of the, uh, of the unexpected. I don't think you'll be needing this any longer, Mr. Bondage. <laughs> but I will. I have the world's largest collection of rings. Diamond rings, emerald rings, little orphan Annie Dakota rings. But this, this is my prized possession. Not only does it make me stylish and fashionable, it also makes me the most powerful man on earth. Why, with this ring in my hands, there is nothing I can't do. Why, I could make copies and equip an entire army. Or perhaps sailors would be fun. <laughs> you see, the possibilities are endless. Yes, endless. And it is mine. All mine. <laughs> Oh, James, I'm so sorry. Ringfinger made me do it. He kidnapped my sister, my daughter, my sister, my daughter, my si Thank you. I wouldn't release her unless I helped trap you. That's all right. I won't hold it against you. Oh, James, I wish you would. And I thought your hands were amazing. What can I do to help? Get me the ring. Well, Mr. Bondage, you may wonder what that is hovering over your body. It is not a sun lamp. <laughs> it is an industrial laser. <laughs> oh, Mr. Bondage. <laughs> This laser is capable of cutting through any material known to man. I'm sure you'd love to see it in action. Bye-bye, <laughs> bondage. He's getting loose. He's free, the injection! <laughs> well, Mr. Bondage, 
It looks like you're going to live up to your name, or should I say, die up to it? <laughs> in case you should wake up, I think this will keep you in your place. <laughs> faster, men, faster! <laughs> You know that, don't you? Are you married? No! <laughs> Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> yes! Yeah. Does he ever give you a valentine on Valentine's Day? No! No? Well, nobody gave me a valentine on Valentine's Day either. <laughs> and you know what happened? What? He broke my heart. You want to see what I do when I get a broken heart? No. <laughs> But I'm going to show you anyway, okay? Okay. <laughs> Here we go. times have you tried to make a great impression on someone and instead you wind up with hay on your face it's happened to all of us at one time or another and in the case of a man it's most likely to happen when he's trying to make an impression on a woman that's why david came up with this next story just when he's convinced that he's the world's biggest klutz he realizes there's one thing he can always rely on magic here is david with this beautiful guest debbie Boone.
language of magic is universal. And because of that, people from all over the world are able to appreciate it. A case in point is my next guest. From Japan, here is Shimon. You know, music is very important to me. I try to use as much of the music I enjoy and the magic I do. In fact, I brought with me some of my favorite albums. I thought I'd show them to you here. Barry Manilow. We try to use a, a lot of Barry Manilow music. In fact, in the last year's show, we used a Barry Manilow tune. Debbie Boone is on our show today. Uh, George, can you play Debbie Boone's big hit? She had a big hit last year. Do you remember, uh, remember this? Dumbo was one of my favorite movies when I was a kid. Uh, in fact, do you remember the theme song from Dumbo? Do you? you don't remember the theme song from Dumbo? George, can you play the theme song from Dumbo, please? That's not the theme song. Here's some of my other favorites. Eat Your Spinach. Laverne and Shirley Sing. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Cindy Williams. Thank you. 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 Th
are you thanking Thank you. Me? I thank anyone who's bought this album. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, since you're out here, uh -huh. would you mind uh, trying a little experiment with me? Magic? Yes, magic. No knives involved? No knives. All right, sure. Okay. These are some of my favorite records. In fact, I've cut off the backs of these albums, uh -huh. so they all look alike uh -huh. from behind. I'm going to use them. I'm going to use them to make a prediction. All right. All right? Just a moment. Let me just find it. I'm going to show it to the whole audience, but I'm not going to show it to you because I don't want to influence your choice All right. in any way. Okay? okay. But everybody, I'd like you to remember uh, what this album, what this album is, so you all know. This is my prediction. Okay. Now don't tell Cindy. Your prediction for what? Well, something uh, something's going to happen. Oh, uh, okay. All right. I'm going to take it and place it right over here, just like that, so we all know where it is. Okay. And I'm not going to touch it. Okay? Okay. okay. All right. Easy enough. Now, I've got a duplicate set of albums uh -huh. here, and you're going to pick one of these albums, and believe it or not, it will match my prediction over here. All right. Okay. I'm not real good at this. Okay. Well, all right. We'll, we'll try. I'll try. Okay. I'll try, I'll try to make it easy I'll, on you. All right. All right. Yeah. I'm going to go through them one by one. And as I go through them, I want you to tell me when to stop at any point that you want. You'll have a perfectly free selection sometime today. Okay, stop. Do you want this one or do you want the next one? I want the next one. The next one? Yes. Okay. You sure? Yeah, I'm positive. Okay. Then take it and hold it up against All right. just like this. You just made an album cover very happy. Oh, David, really? <laughs> I made a prediction over here. It's uh -huh, remained in full right. view yes, you did. Yes. all this time. Uh -huh. From this duplicate stack, you selected one album. Yes. She could have selected any of these albums. But she selected the one which she has firmly clutched up against her self. Now, this is a big moment of the show. Peek at your album. Peek at what it is. Don't show it to anybody. Uh -huh. Okay? And in a loud voice, tell us the name of the artist who recorded that album. Debbie Boone. <laughs> what, what, did, I, did I mess it up? What, what's the name of the album? Come on, tell the me the name truth. of the album? Yeah. Uh, you Light Up My Life. <laughs> it's Debbie Boone, You Light Up My Life. Cindy. It is, David. Turn it Debbie on. Boone. Show the whole audience what it is, what it really is. <laughs> I told you I wasn't any good. <laughs> this has never happened before. Well, in this case, there's only one thing to do. Those are based on things from your life, but that's not always the case, is it? Well, not always, but sometimes I have a special reason for creating a particular illusion. And the next one is a perfect example of that. But in order to do it, we're going to have to kind of work together. You want me to help? Yeah. Hey, I got a great idea. Why don't you levitate me home and then levitate that sports car in my garage? <laughs> I brought something for you to read. Let me look it over. Mm -hmm. It's a fable. Right, but this one has a moral that's very special for me. Well, I'll be glad to read it. There was a boy from long ago, and once upon a time, he wasn't like the other boys with lots of trees to climb. Other boys played baseball and later learned to drive. But this boy had a different way of making things arrive.
All fables have a moral, so we couldn't leave it out. They make it clear exactly what the story's all about. Though children may be thoughtless, mean, or all of the above, someday they will return the gift their parents gave them, love. I'd like to thank my guests, Jack Klugman, Cindy Williams, Debbie Boone, Mary Crosby, Louis Nye, and Shimada. Tonight, we've brought you many new illusions. Some of them have been inspired by important moments of my life. I'd like to thank you for allowing us to share those personal moments with you, and also for being a wonderful audience. Good night. Also featured in tonight's cast, Eunice Christopher, George Cooper, David Mendenhall, L.L. L. Henricks, Randy Doney, Lynn Erics, Leanne Granger, Ken Grant, and Lynn Lakeland.